All right, so we're going we're gonna to get started, as chit-chatty as you all are today. Uh, so welcome to finals week, right? Um, we, we obviously have everything due on Wednesday, but that also means that Wednesday is the official last day of class. Unlike previous semesters, if you come to DVC at previous semesters, um, the final schedule is weird. So now you have class both finals days, regardless of which day you have the final. You're required to have class both days. Go figure. Um, and that means we have regular class. So it's not like the shortened class like we used to have or whatever. It's just regular class. I do not have the illusion that it's going to take you the whole three hours to finish everything. Um, so that's great news for all of you in 220 who are going to be panicked at that point, um, which is OK. But you still have to come. You will turn in all of your printed versions. You will post all of your stuff online. I will say one more time, at the risk of you guys throwing things at me, because I've said it so many times, I'm just trying to make sure you don't forget, right? Interior, exterior, day and night rendering. That's four renderings plus one line drawing. I cut one of them out, so it's one line drawing. So minimum five items. If you turn in two, like an interior, two interior night renderings and not an interior day rendering, you're not going to get credit for the interior day rendering. Does that make sense? So like you have to check the boxes. And I'm not trying to beat you over the head. I just I don't want to give people 20% on the final because you didn't turn in what I told you to turn in. Does that make sense? Like I'm really trying to make sure this is going to work. Can you tell I've had problems with this in the past? Say it one more time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> sure, you want me to say it one more time? Yeah. So just make sure you read it and you do everything that I say. So five things you need turned in. Interior, exterior, day and night renderings, plus one line drawing. If you give me more than that, that's fantastic. I will grade whatever the best one is when it comes to it. But you have to submit each of those requirements. That's, that's, a, that's critical. Um, so we're going to make sure that you guys do that. You're also going to print each of those on an 11 by 17 in color, each one. Well, I guess the line drawing could be in black and white. That would be OK. But the other ones should be in color. You're going to print each one of those. So at least five 11 by 17s. You don't have to put text on them. You don't have to do anything fancy, no InDesign layouts, none of that kind of stuff. It would be nice if you put your name on the back. Don't have to. But it would be nice. Uh, I bind them together so that I have, and I'll get out this today. I'll go in and get out last year's um, little books. I bind them all together so I have a record of what you guys did. Um, so you'll turn all of those in on the back table. I'll bring donuts. There'll be a. I ordered them today. It's a ridiculous number of donuts. They, uh, you walk into the donut shop and they're like, really? Like, yeah. One thirty-five and one thirty-six. It's five dozen donuts. It's five dozen donuts. It's like a serious donut order. <laughs> so anyway, they're assorted, and hopefully they'll be good. Right? They're by a little local donut shop. I support the local donut shop, so all good. It, yeah, every semester I buy five dozen donuts. Yep. Yep. No, no, they, they're, they're popular. They're popular. Anyway, so I will bring those in. Um, in exchange for your donut, Right? There's always a cost to these things, right? No, in exchange for your donut, all I ask is that you guys complete a survey. If you took 135, you completed a very similar survey. Uh, the survey, I don't even look at them until after I submit grades. So they, you can say I was the worst teacher ever, and it's not going to change your grade at all. Um, hopefully, you would say that I was the best teacher ever, in which case it would change it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it won't. I don't look at them until afterwards, so there's absolutely no way for me to be biased towards you. Um, what? No, I actually. Th there is logic to these things. The reason that I give you the donuts, and this is that's a good question, actually. So it is to relieve stress. That helps. No, I um, when I was in uh, when I was at Berkeley, one of the professors that I had that oversaw one of the studios. She wasn't actually the head of the studio, but she oversaw it because it was these visiting Japanese architects that came in and whatever. Anyway, at every review that we had, she had it catered. She would like go and have like food brought in and drinks brought in and everything. And we would come into the review, and it was this really cool, special moment. I can't quite afford to have it catered for you guys, but 
I look at it as you guys completed a lot of work. There's no reason you couldn't, shouldn't have a little bit of a celebration at the end. So for me, I buy donuts. It also gives me an excuse to have a donut twice a year. And I like donuts. So yeah, you get donuts. Uh, so th there is logic. There is a reason that I do it. I think it's, it's an important milestone to have finished a class and to have turned in your final portfolio. And so it's a little bit of a reward for that. Um, the, the evaluations that I'm going to ask you to fill out are really important to me, even though I don't read them until after the grades are submitted. Uh, they help shape the class. They help you guys tell me what worked and what didn't work. Uh, what things were clear, what things weren't clear. I have a bunch of questions that I ask specifically. Did you like this? Do you not like that? That sort of thing. Can you think of a better assignment for this? Whatever. Um, and that helps me change. Believe it or not, the course changes and evolves a lot. When I had to pick what to cut out this semester, I went back and looked at all this, the feedback from things that people said, oh, that wasn't that relevant. Um, I talk to people who have taken the class and moved on to Berkeley and try to get feedback about what they think is important so that I make sure I teach you and you're prepared when you move on. That's my point. It's valuable to me, so I ask that you guys actually spend some time. Um, I'm not saying that it's going to take you three hours to do that survey, but actually sit down, plan on spending a little bit of time, even though even those of you that are in 220 and are panicking about your presentation later that day, plan on you know a half hour to fill it out and give me some good quality feedback, because it is really important and I value it a lot. So um, I'd ask that you guys do that if you don't mind. So. Um, Obviously, we're going into the final. Today, I'm going to uh, give you back grade sheets. The grade sheets that I will give you today are current as of last Wednesday. That's when I did the grading. They're all printed out. So if you did more work over the weekend, which I'm suspecting a lot of you did, the grade sheets won't reflect that. Uh, but this is a good opportunity for you to double check where you are, what I've done, what you've done. Um, the final is worth 30% of your overall grade. That means if you have a B, let's say you have an 85 right now, depending on how you do on the final, you could move yourself up to an A, and you also could move yourself down to a C. So I'm just saying that it could swing either way. It's probably more likely uh, if you had the 85, it would be easier for you to end up with a C by not turning in things and, and tanking the final, which has happened. Um, than necessarily moving up. But fair warning, the final's worth enough to kind of sway you one direction or the other. So be aware that that is valuable and don't just like not do it, okay? Um, so I will, turn out, I, will, I will pass out all the grade sheets. You can have a look. It's entirely possible that I missed a few things for you. That's okay, tell me that I missed them. Um, if you posted a bunch of stuff over the weekend, of course I will get to it and the grade sheet won't reflect that, um, but it is what it is. So today, uh, we are actually going to do another exercise, uh, though I'm not delusional enough to think that all of you will do exactly what I'm t proposing to do today. Um, but we are going to cut a plan today, which is essentially the same thing as cutting a section. So in the past, I've done both plans and sections. I would have preferred to do both, but we obviously ran out of time this semester. So today, I'm only going to do a plan. The, the technique is exactly the same. The only difference is that the plan is cut horizontally, the section's cut vertically. All the stuff is the same, though. So there's no reason that you couldn't do the same strategy um, to do a section uh, of, your, of your building. So today I'm going to work to create the line drawing plan, which is usually almost all the same steps that we did uh, last class on uh, a week ago, or last Wednesday. So I'm going to work through and do that and show you the process here. And then you guys will be free to just kind of work. We'll do troubleshooting. If you have trouble with your renderings or whatever, today's kind of the last day that I can help you with that. Um, but obviously, we're moving forward toward the final. So uh, I have my master site file open and ready to create the plan view. Uh, I'm going to go ahead before I do anything, and I'll do a save. So I'll do a file save as, and I will call this the plan. There we go, and I'll go ahead and click Save. And for some of you, setting up the actual view isn't that hard because your building is already orthogonal and it's on the x and y axis. And so you, all you have to do is essentially use your top view. So go to Set View, Named Views, and then Top, and there it is. Now, in my case, I've oriented my building so that it's not uh, orthogonal. It's not in its traditional orientation. So I could do a plan view like this. But I could also orient my view such that it's 
orthogonal. So I'm going to walk you through how I would do that orientation in the top view so that you're aware that it can be done, uh, whether or not it's something that you want to do. Did you have a question? Yep, you can look. You're welcome to look. <laughs> no worries. OK, so moving on, uh, if I want to change this view's orientation, I'm going to go ahead and click on the downward facing triangle next to the top. And I'm going to go to my uh, set camera and then show camera. And so remember, the camera doesn't actually show in the top view, but it shows in my other views. It shows in the perspective view. If I zoom out here, there it is. If I zoom out in this perspective view, it's there. And if I zoom out in this side view, it's there as well, though it's much harder to see. There's that camera right there. Remember, it's really tall and skinny. That's because it's in parallel projection, not in perspective. I'm not so worried about this tall, skinny stripe, but I am concerned with the camera itself. So I have a couple points on the camera. I have a camera point out here. I have a camera point in the center, which is the target. And I have this camera point that's straight out 90 degrees from that center point. I'm going to select that point right there, this one. So if I'm looking down at it, I'm kind of doing this in multiple views so you can see it. It's this point that's out from the center. I'm going to select that one. And I'm going to go ahead and type rotate. And after I've done that, I'm going to snap to the actual center of the camera, the center point of the camera, which I'm going to have to orbit myself around a little bit to see. Come on. I've turned on my point snap. There it is. So I'm at the center of the camera, or the target. And then I'll come back out to that point that I selected. And that's going to allow me to rotate the view. So see how the top is rotating right now? So I'm essentially, I haven't changed the, the angle of the camera. I'm looking straight down on it. It's still flat, but I'm changing the rotation of the camera angle. So at this point, I have to think about which way do I want it. Do I want to look at the plan like that? Or do I want to look at the plan like this? And depending on which way I want to look at the plan, I'm going to find some object to snap to. I'm going to use my perpendicular snap, I hope. And so let me find something. I might end up unchecking everything but perpendicular snap, and then coming over here until I can find something to snap perpendicular to, which of course it's being really annoying and not letting me snap. I'm going to turn on the projection and see if that'll help me get there. There it is, perpendicular. So I found something to snap perpendicular to. And when I do that, my top view now is oriented so I have it in the xy. Does that make sense? So I essentially just rotated my camera view. At this point, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on my plan so that I'm seeing my whole building. There it is. And I'll go ahead and save this view. So I'm going to go to the little triangle. I'm going to go to Set View. And I'll go to Named Views. And I will save this as my plan. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So I have plan one, which means I can come back to this view over and over again. The next piece is just like I did in the last one. I want to draw a rectangle that represents this view. And so I'll come up here to my rectangle. And I'm not going to do corner to corner. I'm actually going to do the uh, three points, this one here. And I'm going to turn on my point snap again. And I will snap, let me turn off project. And I will snap to that point. I will snap to that point. And I will come and snap to the point that is in the middle, if I, I can find it. Sometimes these things are impossible to see. And find it there. Oh, come on. OK, that one clearly didn't work. Let me try that one more time. It 
There we go. Work now. And if I look at it, it's exactly one quarter of the overall view. So I'm going to do a scale from this corner by two. And now it fills up the whole view. I see a very faint yellow line all the way around my plan one view. I'm creating that so when I ultimately do the rendering and when I do the make 2D of this view, I'll know exactly what the view um, borders are. OK, so now I have to actually cut my plan. So I need a big plane. Let me turn back on my Tahoe site there. There we go. I need a big plane that cuts through this. So I'll do a rectangular plane corner to corner. There it is. Sometimes it's helpful to see this in its shaded mode, like that. And I'm going to zoom back in on my building. Sometimes it's helpful to actually select the building and then zoom selected to get in here. And now I need to think about this as where it's going to be cutting through. It happens to be awfully close to where I want it to cut through right here. Uh, but I could move this up or down depending on where it is that I wanted it to cut through. It looks like it's a little bit high, so I might move vertically. Uh, I don't know, let's go down by negative one foot. So it's just a little bit lower. Yeah, that seems pretty good in terms of where I want to be cutting through my building. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use my section tools. And for ease, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, this big terrain out here. Um, it's really not something that's particularly useful, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that. I thought I was going to turn it off. Where is it? Hmm. I'll just type hide. That'll work. Because I'm really not concerned about that so far away from where I am. OK. so. Now that I've done that, I'm going to create a section, a temporary section view using the section tools command. So I'm going to go to uh, section tools create, or st create. Select objects to section. I'm going to say all, except for my big plane. So I'm just slicing through that. I'll go ahead and hit Enter when I'm done. Then I get, press Enter to accept options, but I'm looking at my options. First thing, solid mode should be set to surfaces which is good. The rest of this is all fine. When it comes to direction, I'm not going to select my direction in the perspective view. I'm actually going to select my direction in the XY, uh, or in, in the right view, or in the front view. So I'm going to move over into this view here. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And now I'm seeing my arrows pointing down versus pointing to the side. So if I'm in the perspective view, if I'm in either perspective view, see how the arrows are pointing to the side? This time, I want it pointing down. So I'm going to be in the right view. And I'm going to snap to, I'll snap to the center of that big plane. There it is, ST00. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and press Enter. And now I've created that particular section. So I'll come back into. Just to view it, I'll go back into my perspective here. And let me zoom in on this object. Zoom selected. There we go. And I'm going to type ST view sections. Or I can go up to the section tools and then view. Right there. And I'm going to pick the ST00. Select viewport. I'm going to enable it in perspective right now so I can preview it. And I'm also going to need to hide that big plane. So there's that big plane. Uh, I could actually create a layer. Let me. There it is. Let me change this onto that layer. And I can turn that off. There we go. So now as I zoom in here, we can see that I've actually cut through my building at that height. I've also cut through the surrounding topography. So I could fill in all of the things that I've cut through, which would be a good idea. So let me go ahead and create a new layer. 
uh, and we'll call this plan fill. I'll make that the current layer. And then I need to fill in the stuff that I've cut through. So I'll go back to my um, surfaces here. And depending, sometimes a rectangular plane is a good strategy. I'm going to turn off the center snap. I'll turn on end snap. Uh, I'll also turn on perpendicular. And essentially, I'll fill in those things that I've cut through. The section tools does a reasonable job at filling some of them in, but it doesn't get all of them. So you're always going to have a little bit of touch up work to do. And it's important that I fill these in, unlike last time, because as I create these surfaces uh, and do a rendering, I don't want my hall of walls to appear hollow. I want them to appear as if they're solid. So I need to make sure that they're all filled in. And it looks like I've gotten everything, oops, except for that one right there. There we go. So I've gotten all those filled in, which is good. So I'm ready to perform a rendering or a make 2D from the top. So we can see the preview. It looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and go back to my plan one view. There it is. I'm going to show that section in this plan one view. So I'm going to go to section tools view or ST view and I'm going to view ST00 in the plan 01 view. And there it is, I'm looking down on it. So now that I'm looking down on this, I'm going to go ahead and do my make 2D of this section or this plan. So I'll go ahead and type make 2D Select objects to draw, it's going to be all. So I'm looking down on everything. There it is. Do all. There we go. I'll go ahead and press Enter when done, and I get the Make 2D Drawing options. So again, this is where I have a choice of turning on hidden lines if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my hidden lines, and I'm going to also maintain the source layers. Again, that's an optional thing for you to do as well. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And this shouldn't take as long as when we did the elevation view because there's a lot, there's generally a lot less in it. When I'm done, I'm going to keep the plan view here, but I'll change the right view down here to the top view. So I'll go to set view and then top. And then I will Z for zoom, S for selected, so that I can look down at my drawing. And as I zoom in, it looks like it didn't export the my rectangle. I went around the view. Where did that go? That must have been on a layer that I turned off. So let me go ahead and do that make 2D one more time because I lost my um, I lost my viewport rectangle. I'm going to have to figure out what layer it was on. Actually, I'll just draw it again. Uh, so let me go back to my rectangle and I'll do three points. I'm going to make sure that point snap is turned on. And I'll go from there to there to the center. I'll take that and I will scale it by two. There it is. So like I said, I'm not quite sure what happened, but it's important to make sure that I, I get that as well. So I'll go back to the plan do view. I'll type make 2D again. I'll do all. And I'll hit Enter. Um, the rest of these options are all fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. And it will redo the Make 2D view. Perfect. There it is. Did it really not do it again? Well, that's frustrating. 
Uh, it should have done the, uh, the, the rectangle, but for some reason it's, it's struggling. Uh, maybe it's because this is above the section tools. Let me move this vertically down a bit. There we go. I just moved it straight down, and I'm going to try that Make2D one more time. I apologize for this but I would rather solve it in front of you than gloss over it if I can. So one more time in the plan view here. And I will type make 2D all. Go. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I'll say OK. And there it is. So it was just above the clipping plane. So it wasn't actually doing it. In this view, I do have it, which is what I was after. So there it is. I have my viewport right there. I'm going to go ahead and move this. Actually, before I do the move, let me go ahead and trim off all this extra stuff. I really don't need it. So we'll use my, um, my object here. I'll type trim, and I'll get rid of that line and that line. And then I will take this and move it from this point to 0, 0, 0, and then zoom selected. And I moved it to 0, 0 before I did the export because we're going to end up having trouble if we export it to Illustrator if it's not at the origin. It's going to be off in the artboard somewhere, and we won't be able to find it. So there it is at 0, 0. I can now go to the File menu and go to Export Selected. And instead of exporting to a Rhino file, we're going to export to Adobe Illustrator. And I'll put it on today's flash drive. Here we go. And we are on plans. And we can call this uh, plan one. And under options, I'm going to preserve the model scale, but it's going to be 48 to 1. 48 inches equals 1 inch. That's quarter inch equals a foot. I'll go ahead and say OK. And I'll do one more save and confirm one more time, 48 to 1, and OK. That's then created the Illustrator for, file for me. So I have that made for me. Now I need to do the clay rendering, just as we did in the section lecture. So these all come together. Uh, so first thing I need to do is I can actually turn off all the Make 2D layers, because they don't matter anymore. And I will turn back on my big section plane here. And at this point, it's time to explode my blocks. So I'm going to work in this perspective one view. There it is. And I'm going to type SEL block instance to get all of the blocks. And I will then explode. And remember, I did a save as before I did this because it's destructive. Perfect. I'm going to hit Escape and then SEL block instance. And I'll explode again. I'll hit Escape twice, and then SEL block instance, explode again, SEL block instance. No objects were added to selection. OK, good. I made it. I'll go ahead and go to um, Shaded so that we can see this a little bit more. Whoops. That was not right. There we go. And I'm going to use that big plane that I created, this one here. Oops. I have to turn it. There it is. There's that big plane. And I need to use that to do a split of my drawing. It might be easiest to do this in the side view. So I'll go to my set view and go to, let's do the right side view. There we go. And so with that big plane selected, Right there. We're going to go ahead and type split. Uh, actually, I'm going to deselect everything and type split first. Then it says select objects to split. It's going to be pretty much everything except for that big plane. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Select cutting objects. It's going to be that big plane. There's my surface. 
and I'll go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go through and split all of my objects. Okay, so it finished the split. So I'll look at it again in the side view. Uh, let me select one of these objects so that I can zoom selected. Nope, sorry, that was not supposed to be the case. I didn't switch views. Mm. All right, so there I am. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything on the top of that split. And sometimes doing this in the wireframe mode is important so that when you do your selections, you can select not on one of the lines. I'm going to come down here and select everything right to where I cut my section. Right there, everything should be selected. Uh, obviously, it's not selecting lights, but everything else is selected. And with all of those selected, I'm going to go to my V-Ray materials. And I'm going to apply the see-through material to those. Looks like I haven't loaded it yet, so I'll right click and say load material. On my flash drive, under resources here, under V-Ray, and under special materials, I have see-through. So we'll go ahead and load that see-through. Uh, but before I actually apply the see-through material, I want to deselect anything that has glass. So I'm going to look here for layers that have glass on them. Glass railing. No glass. Another window glass. OK, good. So I deselected all of that. Uh, I'm going to go back to my V-Ray materials. So I'll go to my V-Ray material editor. I'll find see-through. There it is. And I'm going to right click and apply material to selection. It's going to override the materials that are currently on it. And it's going to apply uh, the see-through material to all of those. Then I will deselect everything. And I'll come back and I'll select the glass. So I'll say select objects here. I'll turn on this window glass, and I'll say select objects. I'll turn on this and say select objects. But I actually think I mistakenly selected the wrong thing, so I think I have it all. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to um, deselect the things that are below. So I'll hold down Control, and everything below my section line right there, I'm going to deselect. And so all of these windows are going to become transparent. So I'll go back up to V-Ray, go back to my V-Ray material editor, and I'm just going to create a transparent material because I don't have one. I'll right click, create material, standard. And we can call this transparent. And that transparent material, I'm just going to change the transparency value to white, which makes it perfectly transparent. I'll right click and apply material to selection. Now all of that glass that's above the section cut line is going to end up being um, completely transparent. Perfect. So now I can go back to my plan view here. And I actually don't, I no longer need to have the section tools showing because when I perform the rendering, it's going to use the see-through material instead. So I'm going to go back to section tools, and I'm going to say clear all from all views or ST clear all views. And then at this point, I'm almost ready to do a clay rendering. If I were to do a rendering right now, it would give me a full color rendering. And I don't want the full color rendering. I just want a clay rendering. 
So I'm going to need to select everything below except for the glass. So I'll come down here, and again in the right view, I'm going to select everything below. There we go. I'll go back into my V-Ray materials. Is there anything that I missed? There we go. Go back into my V-Ray material editor, and I'm going to create basic, a basic gray material. So I'll right click and say create material standard. Actually, the default's pretty close. I just might do a slightly lighter gray. There it is. And I'll go ahead and apply this material to selection. But before I do that, again, I want to deselect those windows. So let me go to my glass railing, and we'll deselect it. We'll go to my window glass, and I'll turn it off. And we'll go to this window glass, and we'll turn that off. So I've deselected all the glass. I'll go back to my V-Ray material editor, and I'll apply that default gray material to the selection. All of that now has the default material. I'll deselect and turn on just the window glass here. Oops, I didn't mean to make it active. Let me select objects. Turn this on, select objects. Turn this on, select objects. Uh, and actually, I can leave. That is currently still glass, so I can just leave it as glass. Uh, it'll still render out just fine. OK, so now let me switch back over into the plan view. There it is. And I should make this upper bit of the terrain also that default material. So let me go to V-Ray, uh, Material Editor, Apply Material to Selection, even though that's above my section cut. Uh, let me make plan active here. Let me go back to Set View, Plan 1, so it's exactly in the same view. And I can go ahead and perform a rendering. So in this case, it is rendering, but I don't think I have my sun turned on. So let me come back up here and let me turn my sun on. There we go. And that probably means I need to load the, the daylight settings, or at least the um, see-through material settings for V-Ray. So let me go back to my V-Ray uh, options. And I'll go ahead and load those see-through materials. Remember, those are available on the course website if you went to the V-Ray quick rendering setups. Right down here is the clay rendering, so you can download this file. Remember, it's a right click and save link as, otherwise you'll get the XML version of it, which looks like this. And then you can go ahead and load it. Let me go ahead and save that, because I'm not sure where it is on my flash drive. And I'll put it in today's folder. And we'll go ahead and save it. I'll go back over into here, and we'll load that in. So I'll go into today's folder. There it is, and we'll load that in. Perfect. And I've gone ahead and turned the sun on, and we'll go ahead and try a rendering and see how it looks. Let me, before I commit to this, let me also go to V-Ray and then Options. And I'm going to go into Output, and I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio, get the current image aspect ratio, and then lock it again. So it exactly matches what I'm trying to create here. And then we'll up the size, and we can go ahead and perform the rendering. Let me go ahead and click on Render here. All right, and so what it's doing, we'll let it, let it finish, but it's calculating it as if uh, the whole building were there and casting shadows. Which is good, but I'm just thinking here. that I don't really. So I'm going to have to do a little Photoshop work because some of these shadows I'm not going to want. I'm going to want this outer shadow uh, from the whole building, but not the inner shadow, because I'm going to want the inner shadow. Hmm. I wonder. I don't know. I have to think about that. 
because I want this shadow, but I also want the interior. So I may end up doing two versions of this. Uh, one where I've, I've turned on the, the section plane so that I can see it, and one where it looks like this. So I can go ahead and save this into today's, today's folder. And this is plan. And I'll go ahead and save that. And then let me go ahead and open up Illustrator so we can see that line drawing for us here. And I'll go ahead and open up Illustrator. There we go. I put it in the wrong folder. All right, let me press Control uh, 0 so I can see everything, or Control minus, and we can see there's my plan. I need to adjust my artboard in Illustrator. So just as we did uh, last class, I'm going to click on the artboard tool, which is right here on the left side. And I will make this match up with my viewport by dragging it there and there. Uh, when I'm done, I'll go ahead and go back to the direct select tool, the black arrow. Uh, and now I can go through and I can make my adjustments. I have both hidden, if I look at my layers, not quite as many. I'm going to go ahead and organize these. I'll create a new layer for visible. And I will create a new layer for hidden. I'm going to put the visible layer on top of the hidden layer. And then I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to pick all of the ones that are um, hidden. And I'll put all of those on the hidden layer. And I'll take all of the ones that are visible. I'll put all of those on the visible layer. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. I'll take all the hidden objects. I'll select them all. And then I will go to Properties. I'm going to change the stroke color first to be kind of a 50% gray. I could actually type in 0, 0, 0, and then 50 to get a 50% gray. And then I'm going to um, change their line weight to 0.25 points. And I really should change their line type too. I'm going to go to View excuse me, window, and it's going to be stroke. And I'm going to show my options, and I'm going to turn that into a dashed line, which would be a two-point by two-point dashed line. Good. And then I'll go ahead and click off. So there's a few lines in here that are those hidden lines. But I also need to go through and look at my visible lines. So we'll start with all my visible lines. I'll select them all, and then change the color to be black. Sorry, it didn't commit. There we go. Color to be black. Good. And I will change my line weight. We'll do maybe 0.5 points. But in all reality, I'd ultimately want to fill some of these in so that they'd end up being black and I could see it that way. That's a perfect opportunity for a live paint, but that's also a bit beyond the scope of this class. Uh, I'm going to do it really quickly, but if I lose you, don't stress out about it. I'm going to duplicate the visible layer, I hope. which it's not letting me do. 
All right, well, we'll have to do it this way. Select all the objects here. And I'm going to go to my Live Paint. So I'll go to Object, Live Paint, Make. And then under the Shapes tool is the Live Paint Bucket tool. You can also press K. And this is going to allow me to fill in my lines. I'm going to fill them in with about a 75% gray. And essentially what I'm going to do is fill in those things that I've cut through. So I'll fill in here, here, there, there, there. Like that. And I think those are all the pieces that I've cut through. So those would appear a little bit darker. Uh, which helps to, to let the plan read a little bit. Again, that's a live paint. It's not something that is part of this class, but I at least wanted to point it out. We press Control-0 so I can zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole plan there. I can also go to File and then Place, and I can bring in that shadow. So there was the shadow. I'll go ahead and place it in here, Control-. minus. Like I said, I'm going to need to make a few adjustments to this, so let me First, go uh, and place it in that corner. There we go. And then I need to make this smaller. I'll hold down Shift and make it smaller until it fits correctly. There it is. And I will take that, put it on its own layer. I should have done that from the beginning. And put it below everything else. So this is just giving me the shadows for the building as a whole to the outside. But I don't want these shadows on the inside, so I really need to go back and edit that in Photoshop. And this is where you can see everything's interrelated. Um, there's a reason that 135 we, we focus so much on Photoshop, so that we can quickly jump in and fix these kinds of things. All right, so in this case, I don't want all of this content. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and paint over it. There we go. Same thing here. And we'll go ahead and paint over that, too. That gives me the shadow outside of my building, like that. I'll go ahead and save this. I'll go to File, and then Save. And I'll say OK. Then when I go back to Illustrator, it says, some things have been updated. So would you like to update them? Yes, I would. And you can see that well, it's supposed to update that file for me. I've got a window and then links. And there we go. Uh, it looks like it's not aligned correctly. That's my mistake. It should be aligned right over here. Like that, to perform uh, the shadow for my building itself. So anyway, you get the idea, but it does take a little bit of finesse to get the plan to look right. But it's a really quick and easy way of creating a plan from something that you spent all this time modeling. There are things that need to be corrected. These little lines in here should be dashed like the other lines that are dashed. And there's more that I could spend time uh, correcting the, the pool, for example, et cetera. Um, but you're, you're getting after, essentially, the idea that I can create a plan relatively easily from my Rhino file. Same thing would be true if we did a section. We would just be cutting it and orienting our camera differently, but all the same strategies still apply. Um, I could come back into Rhino, and I could hide those objects that are above here to get a better shadow version. I could take all of these objects there, and I could hide them, and I could go back to this plan view and I could re-render 
And in this scenario, I'd get what the shadows are on the inside. Oops. Might have to go back and double check. I'll go, I'll go work through it, get the shadows on the inside, but that is something else that I can do uh, as well. So I know you guys have a lot to do. I didn't want to talk too long today, but I at least wanted to walk you through uh, being able to create the plan view of your, of your uh, model. From here on out, uh, you guys are free to do whatever you see fit. Please post something for today as your exercise 227, right? It's 227 today. Uh, so make sure you post something as 227. 227 will be the last exercise that you post for this class, so there won't be another post. You do not have to post for 220, I think it's 224. Let me look and make sure. Yep, there is nothing for 224, so I'm not expecting a post. Nor is there something for anything after 227, so there won't be 228 or 229. Um, you should today have, have posted your 204 assignment. Um, that was due today. And then everything else will be due next class. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other. Anybody have any questions going forward? No? OK. I'll let you guys start. And if you, if you need help, let me know.